Like, are people going to ask people when they go bring that car to a car show to rev up the speaker? Like, who designed this product? The only thing that is getting suntans right now more than anyone are Stellantis products on dealership lots. They are not selling, number one. Number two, the prices of these products have astronomically have gone up. And number three, their product right now is just not that good for what you're paying. Stellantis right now, they're paying their CEO, basically, Carlos Tavares, $30 million. And the company is not is not doing well. Like if we even look at the Italian brand part of Stellantis, the Alfa Romeo, I mean, yeah, nice looking car, but they're not selling. And they are expensive. And you can tell that the Chrysler and Ram and Dodge product interior has obviously integrated itself into the Alfa Romeo. And it's just not that nice of an interior as much anymore. I mean, I don't mind the car, but I mean, it's a whole different story. We've got Dodge now coming out with the EV charger and cha well, the Charger Daytona. And who, who decided that they are gonna put engine noises in the speakers and have it rev up when you're driving? Like, are people gonna ask people when they go bring that car to a car show to rev up the speaker? Like, who designed this product and said, you know what, this is a really good idea. If it's an electric car, don't put some fake sounds in it. It's just going to make it worse. The car in general is actually not that bad looking. Ram has now finally thought of getting rid of their classic trucks. I'm pretty sure they are. That truck design has been around for over a decade, and it used to be a cheap truck. You know, you want to buy a brand new Ram Classic. You know, you're going to be paying 40 45 now that's pushing it for a cheap truck, full size. They are pushing 50 to 60 grand. I've seen some Ram Classics, right? Cause, Cause some dealerships too will be like, okay, we'll change the wheels, you know, tires and we'll do a lift and stuff. But a classic for like 50, 60 grand is insane. The truck is so old and it's so outdated and people, I don't know who's buying these trucks. It is the worst looking truck on the market for that price. You know, a cheap truck, we're th I'm thinking 30 grand to 40 max, that's pushing and it's brand new. I mean, Ford Mavericks, right? They're not even in the quarter ton segment. They're a little bit smaller. You know, they're pushing 50, 55 grand. That's insane. I remember when XLTs, not that long ago, were pushing, you know, 55 grand, 60, right? And now we're at this point where Mavericks are, you know, reaching that 60 grand mark. Now the bar has been reset. It's higher. Like we look at XLT F-150s and we're looking at Elevation GMCs, right? The Ram, let's just go like a big horn, 70 grand. Like, and that's just base now. And that's where the bar is set at 70 grand. I mean, we're talking Canadian, but you know what? 55 US for a base truck. It's a lot of money now. Stellantis is paying its CEO 30 million guys and the, the OEM is not doing well like clearly they're losing money They're having UAW issues right now because they are not wanting to build 3.2 billion dollar plant in Belvedere Which they did promise now thousands of workers that were going to be employed there can't work there There are big problems that Stellantis is facing and I understand like obviously they want to cancel those plant but you know, thousands of people now are forced to not have any work. And that is a big issue, of course. Dealerships, let's talk about the dealerships relationship with the OEM. The OEM, Stellantis, is getting dealerships to buy these trucks. And, you know, now we're on 25 model years. They can't even sell 24s. They've probably got 23s on the lot and some 22s. I guarantee if you go to any Dodge Chrysler store, there's probably a couple 22s floating around, right? these lots have these trucks sitting but the problem is now is when these trucks sit they start to develop you know issues they deteriorate batteries start to die you know some some the frame can start to rust depending on where you are like you know i've seen some of this happen i'm obviously there's some defects but these deteriorating trucks just sit and they become bot rods like i said they start sun tanning on these lots and you know, paint starts to fade. It just, this rabbit hole of problems start to happen. Um, now Ram as a brand has trucks sitting on lots. So Ram has a 150 day supply. 
150 day supply of trucks. So that's almost half a year of a dealership not having to get any trucks from the OEM and they could sell. But that's a lot. Toyota, for an example, has about 30, 35 day supply. And this is on new trucks, of course. So within a month, they're gonna be completed, right, of inventory. That's how you wanna turn inventory. 30 days, 60 days, you know, 90 days is pushing it, but 30, 60 days is great. Ram, Jeep, we'll get into Jeep, but Ram has a 150 day supply. And I'll show a little chart here and show, you know, where every manufacturer lies. Jeep is a big issue right now. They're not selling. Jeep compasses are pushing 50 grand, guys, a Jeep compass. Who in their right mind is going to pay $50,000 for a Jeep compass? Now, let's circle back to the first thing I said. They are going to go out of business just because they can't sell these products. They're just pushing so much money that it doesn't make sense to pay that much. They're just an inferior product. People know it. Like when you look at trucks as the three big domestics, you've got Ford, obviously GM and, and Ram. Who is gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna go buy a Ram compared to a Ford GM or, you know, or a Toyota. Typically, you're gonna probably want a Ford, you're probably gonna want a GM, or you're gonna probably potentially want a Toyota. I personally don't think people are like, I'm just gonna go to a Ram. I mean, if that truck's treated you well, great. But the, it's just proven, the resale values suck and it's just an inferior product. They have issues. Every truck brand has issues, but my goodness, if you're gonna pay 120, 130,000 Canadian for a Ram, like that is crazy. You are gonna get hit with this, the worst appreciation ever on that pickup, and you're just gonna throw money down the drain. Now, that's just for Ram. Jeep, they are pushing now. Jeep Gladiators are expensive. Great, you know, little truck but they're pushing 60, 70 grand. The Rubicon Wranglers are in that ballpark, right? Even more depending on what it is. It is crazy. I mean, I don't know how they're gonna be able to continue supporting the dealerships in this manner because if they can't sell what they have, you know, there's gonna be problems. I'm not saying everything from Slantis is bad. I mean, I would love to get myself a Durango Hellcat. I mean, I mean those SUVs are great, but they're expensive, right? Like, you know, even just a regular Durango, you know, you're pushing 90 grand for a three row SUV. Obviously it's a V8 if you get 392 or even the V6. It's a lot of money for that product. And I know I'm kind of shitting on Dodge right now. I mean, everyone has their problems, but Stellantis is really in a bit of a pickle. I mean, they've got a lot of trucks sitting and you know, who in the right mind would pay, you know, like I said, 50, 60 grand for a Jeep, a Jeep compass like that is insanity. Now they are coming out with the Wagoneer S, so the fully electric, but I think they should take the hint from Ford. Ford just canceled their three row SUV that was going electric. I mean, there is a need for electricity, you know, in when it comes to cars, like electric cars, but I think, you know, people are holding off. People are having to incentivize so much of electric vehicles now because people really aren't buying them as much. The biggest thing that's being pushed right now are cheap used vehicles. Um, compact car sales have gotten up over from last year. You know, people are starting to buy cheap things because interest rates are high. You know, you want to make sure that your payments are low and you want to make sure you can get a car that's going to last and it's reliable. You know, Toyota, maybe a Honda Civic, right? These types of cars are good and reliable and you can go for a long time and not have to have so much maintenance done to it. One other thing too, when it comes to Dodge is their Hornet. Like I have barely seen, I've probably seen one or two. Whoever came out with that, just like that vehicle, I, I don't know what you were thinking. Like it is just not a good selling vehicle. It's not a terrible looking vehicle, but man, I don't know why it's just not selling. Like I see a ton on dealership lots too, right? There's a lot of issues right now, like I said, with Stellantis and they truly within a year or two, they're going to be having a lot of problems and I wouldn't be surprised if they do go out of business in a sense or like they start selling some of these brands. I know the great grandson to Chrysler is looking to purchase some brands to kind of re redo it and redesign these products to get the brand going again. People used to love these, like, you know, I would love myself a 70 Charger. I think those cars were awesome. But to get into a Challenger now, you know, you're pushing 80, 90 grand for a nice one, you know, and that's not just Dodge, that's Mustang too. Mustang 70 grand for, you know, a GT is, is pretty crazy. Camaro too with the SS. 
I think the main point to take away now is I personally would just keep holding off um, Dodge is still incentivizing a lot of their stuff and you might be able to get a truck if you just want a truck for cheap they might be able you might be able to be in a great spot with you know a zero percent truck and 25 to 30 percent off MSRP if you just want a truck boom that might be the best thing to do but I think I would hold off a little bit but right now a little bit of news going on with Stellantis I do think that EV, if they do, if they do build that EV plant, that will kill, that will basically kill them in the U.S. And I know the UAW is really down their throats and trying to get them to stick with their promises that they had, but that will really ruin the company. And you know, prices just people aren't buying, and people buy with their wallets. Obviously, they obviously buy brands that they trust and like. I don't think people have faith in Stellantis right now. I think they're in a bit of a pickle. They need someone to help them get them out. Maybe this grandson of Chrysler or great grandson from Chrysler might be the guy, right? He's an American. He he knows the brands, of course. I mean, you've got Carlos with Stellantis. You know, they're a European company. I don't know if the European market will for sure fit in the US, of course, and Canada. Obviously, it doesn't seem like anything's working. But like I said, the only thing that is getting suntans right now more than anyone are Stellantis products on dealership lots. I think the Dodge Charger Daytona is probably the stupidest thing that they could have done too. I mean, I don't think many people are gonna buy them. They're pushing 70 grand, maybe 80, they're scat packs too. It's not a terrible looking vehicle, but for what you're paying for that product, and it's fully electric i mean as a muscle car like what does a muscle car mean to someone because it's very nostalgic right the challenger and charger are very nostalgic pieces that people truly love it brings them back to their youth back in the 60s and 70s right um those are really cool cars but to come out with a daytona or charger daytona like that and have an electric and have revving noises like that with speakers i just I don't buy it. I'm just sorry. It's just, and I, I don't think I'm alone. I don't think I'm alone here. This is what's going on right now in the Stellantis market. Um, like I said, I don't think they're going to last, especially if they start building this plant, this EV plant, if they're going to be pushed for it. It's going to be an electric battery plant, and they're probably going to build some trucks too, so that are going to be electric that most people wanted to do. You know, brand brands wanted to build electric trucks and cars, so this is what you know they were they were revamping their their strategy, but now they're kind of canceling it because it just doesn't make sense. The buyers, the the, cons the consumers aren't there, right? So let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments. Truly curious to see what's going to happen with Stellantis in the next year, but I will keep you posted and let you know all the news with Stellantis in the future. We'll see you guys in the next video.